Welcome to another Fast Tech video. Before we start, please go ahead and smash that like button and subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. And click the bell next to the subscribe button if you want to get notifications. In this one, I'm going to be showing you guys how to disassemble and repair your PS3 Slim 2000 series. I'm going to be showing you guys how to replace each component when it fails including doing a full D-lid and a thermal paste replacement. This video was brought to you by the Fast Tech Pro Auto Kit, which is an automatic screwdriver you can use to disassemble not just your PS3 Slim, but your PS4, your PS5, your Xbox, your MacBook, your iPhone, your PC, laptop, and more. Links for this amazing product are going to be in the description box and pinned comment. We also stock all PS3 Slim parts, so check the links in the description box and the top comment. Let's get started. The model we're going to be working on today is a PS3 Slim CECH 2000 series, and you can check the serial number at the back of the console. This one is a CECH 2001A. The number after 200 signifies the country code. If you had a Japanese console, you'd have a CECH 2000. The most important thing to look out for is the number after CECH. So if you have a CECH 2000 or 200 console, this video is going to be very helpful for you when doing any kind of repair on your PS3 Slim. Before we start, I ask once again that you drop a like on this video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. You're going to need a couple of specialized tools like a Torx T8 bit and a Phillips bit, both of which are included in our Fast Tech Pro Auto Kit, which is a toolkit that not only disassembles your PS3 Slim, but your PS4, your PS5, and probably the PS6 when it comes out in the future. The first thing I'm going to show you guys how to fix is the PS3 cannot start error with a black screen, as you can see on your screen right now. This error is caused due to a bad hard drive. And fortunately, it's very, very easy to replace. It's hiding under this cover here. And to get to it, we need a Phillips driver on our Fast Tech Pro Auto Kit. Links in the description box. We're gonna attach a Phillips bit. We're gonna lift up this cover under which a blue screw hides like a coward. So we're going to expose that screw and we're going to remove it with our Fast Tech Pro Auto Kit. We're going to get this blue screw out. Once the screw's out, we're going to be able to slide this cover to the right like this and it comes off. Now we're going to be able to remove the hard drive by lifting up this piece like this and then lifting out the hard drive. As you can see, there's some dust on here, which is completely normal for a 12 or 13 year old system, which is what this is. These came out when I was in high school. And this one has a 120 gigabyte hard drive. PS3 Slim 2000 series systems either came with a 120 gigabyte or a 250 gigabyte hard drive. Now, if you're getting the PS3 cannot start error message, it's caused by the hard drive. If you hear ticking noises from this hard drive or if it doesn't boot at all, you have a hard drive issue. It's a standard laptop hard drive with a SATA connector and a power connector. So the best way to test these is to connect these to a PC and do a bad sector test. In some rare cases, the PS3 cannot start error message can be caused by a SATA controller on the motherboard. But in 99% of the cases, it's a bad hard drive. So if you want to replace the hard drive, if you're getting this error, or if you just want to upgrade to an SSD or a bigger hard drive, which we also do sell on our website at fasttechstore.com. And I'll include links in the description box for anyone who's interested. All you got to do is get your old hard drive out of there. And to do that, you got to flip it. And on the back, you'll see these Phillips screws. This time I'm going to attach a bigger Phillips head from our Fast Tech Pro Auto Kit. And we're going to remove these screws. The Fast Tech Pro Auto Kit saves me a lot of time, as you can see here, when I'm doing my electronics repairs. You need this kit, especially if you work on a lot of these consoles. It takes me half the time it would take me with a manual screwdriver to do these repairs. Once you got those four screws out, you're going to be able to get the hard drive out of its enclosure like this. And at this point, you'll be able to switch in a new hard drive 
from fasttechstore.com, of course. Why would you buy it anywhere else? You get your hard drive in there. This is from a 60 gig PS3, so we would not put this one, to, but this is just for demonstration purposes. Reinstall those four screws, stick the hard drive back in. Once you do that, you have to prepare a USB. Then we're gonna plug in our USB drive into our PC. We're gonna go down to this PC. USB drive is gonna show up. We're gonna right click on this USB drive. We're gonna click format. On this option here, this should be FAT32 or XFAT. FAT32 is the most compatible. We can name this drive whatever, it doesn't matter. Label it whatever, and then click start. But keep in mind that if you format this drive, any data on it will be lost. So only do this to a USB drive that you have backed up already and make sure that there's no data on it that you need. Once it says format complete, click OK. We're going to open up this USB drive. We're going to create a new folder in here called PS3. And then we're going to double click that and create a folder in there called update. Then we're going to open up our browser. We go to google.com and then we're going to search for PS3 update file. And the first link, the one that's from playstation.com, we're going to click that. The latest system software update currently is 4.90. So we're going to scroll down on this page and there's going to be an option that says how to reinstall the PS3 console system software. And there's going to be an option that says reinstall using a computer. We're going to click on that. Then we're going to click on this option that says download PS3 update. If you click it and nothing happens, right click and press save link as. Then it's going to ask us to download the file and we're going to download the file onto our USB drive. We're going to open up the PS3 folder, then we're going to open the update folder we created and we're going to save the file here. So if we go to our downloads here, so it is giving us some nanny nannying issues which is what modern tech is these days it's everything is about nannying you and thinking that you're stupid that's why they hide the this pc option all the way down there when it used to be my computer simple easy to access option but if you get this stupid ass thing just press keep anyway because i'm not a retard i know what i'm doing thank you very much for trying to be my dad so now that we have this update file here, now we can close this window and now we can disconnect our USB. This, now we're going to plug in this USB drive into our PS3 and you're going to use the second port because that's the one that works best. The first one also works, but the second one seems to be the most compatible for this type of thing. Any USB drive would work. If you need one, we do got them on our website at fasttechstore.com. Surprise, surprise and follow the instructions on screen. Once you do this and replace the hard drive, all you gotta do is hold the start and select button. It will take you through the prompts. You just press yes a bunch of times, easy. So we've taught you how to do one repair already and we're only five minutes into the video. So if you're not gonna like this video right now, you should probably stop watching. Now, moving on. Now I'm gonna show you guys how to replace the power supply. So if you have a PS3, that does not turn on at all. If you press the power button at the front and the cable's plugged in, the system doesn't beep at all. There's no light at the front as you're seeing here. The light doesn't even come on. It doesn't come on right now because there's no cable installed. But even if you had the cable installed and this PS3 was not turning on at all, there's no light at the front. Press this without damaging it using a heat gun. But we're not gonna be bothering with that. I'm just letting you know that if you bypass this, it is a warranty sticker, technically. So we're gonna use a pry tool from our FastTech Pro toolkit and get this sticker off. Sony, did, Sony barely even honored their warranty when these were in warranty. Microsoft was a lot better, especially with the Red Ring fiasco. Microsoft had an A1 five-star return system for red light systems. But Sony never even honored their warranty when the, these systems were in warranty. It was terrible dealing with them. And that's the void warranty sticker. It will say void once you've removed it without heating it up. And it's gonna reveal one of these tabs that you see here. And there's screws hiding under all of them. There would normally be a rubber foot right here, just like one of these, but it's 
missing. So we're gonna remove these rubber feet first using our pry tool from the Fast Tech Pro Toolkit. The ones in the corner are rubberized for grip. And then we're gonna remove these ones here. This one here, this one here, this one here. And this one here. This is the one where we removed the, the warranty sticker, the so-called warranty sticker. This one here we don't have to remove. That's a blank. So now we're gonna see some Phillips screws. We're gonna use a Phillips bit, which is already in our Fast Tech Pro Auto kit. Now we're gonna switch to a Torx T8H bit from our Fast Tech Pro Auto Kit. This is not a regular T8, but rather a T8H with a security bit because these are security screws. There's three screws right here that we have to remove and these are Torx T8H security screws, not regular T8s. Now we can remove the top cover like this and by pivoting it off the front. This is actually not that bad of a system uh, when it comes to dust. It actually looks fairly clean considering its age. I'm actually quite impressed. Uh, the little dust bunnies there, but this is completely normal. It's actually better than normal. I, this system is a very low mileage unit. So now I'm gonna show you guys how to replace the power supply. There's a couple of cables we have to remove. This is the power supply right here. This is what converts AC electricity to DC electricity for the motherboard. This essentially provides power to all of the system. And if your system is not turning on at all, in most cases, this is the culprit of the issue. In some rare instances of yellow light of death, where the light here goes yellow and then starts blinking red, it could also be caused by a bad power supply, but only if you have to remove the power cable for it to turn on again and then it just goes blank and then you plug the power cable in and then it does yellow light once and then doesn't turn on again unless you unplug and plug the power cable back in. In those instances, it could be a power supply issue as well. But I digress. Let's remove the cables here. There's a cable that we can simply pull out by grabbing it from the connector. There's two parts to the connector, one's on the power supply and then there's a connector that's part of the cable. What I recommend, what's easiest for me is grabbing all of the wires at the same time, not one cable, not one wire at a time, all of them at the same time with your thumb and your index finger and then just pulling it out. I see a lot of people, they'll break these connectors. So the easiest way I find is just grabbing all the cables, all the wires at the same time and pulling out. This one here is, very, very easy to remove also. There's a pinch connector right here. You just pinch on it, thus the word pinch connector, and then you just pull it out. Now there's two Phillips screws here that we have to remove. Let's switch back, let's switch back to a Phillips bit. And then there's one screw here that we have to remove. And one screw here. All right, now we can lift the power supply out of the way. Those two screws are still in there. And that's the power supply right there. It's a model APS 250. You might find a PS3 Slim with an EADP dash something something power supply. These are most of the times interchangeable. If you have a PS3 Slim, in all the cases I've seen at least, 
you can interchange these you can use an APS 270 instead of a 250 but ideally I find the older the power supply the more interchangeable it's going to be these PS3 slims required more power than the ones that came after them so if you want a PS3 slim power supply check the links in the description box we got all the models from APS 250 270 we got super slim power supplies we got it all and so at this point if you were swapping it out if you were switching out the power supply you'd order one from fasttechstore.com install it connect these cables back on reinstall the screws next i'm going to show you guys how to replace the disk drive now if your ps3 is not reading your blu-ray movies your blu-ray discs or your games which are also blu-rays you need to replace the disk drive you can also try to clean out the laser first which i'm going to be showing you guys how to do if you try cleaning the laser it doesn't work you can try replacing it what i'm also going to be showing you and ultimately if that doesn't work either you can replace the entire disk drive and i'm going to show you guys how to do all three of those so we're gonna remove these antenna wires by lifting them up like this there's some tape that these hide underneath we can just slide these wires from the side and get the tape off that way that way we don't damage the tape so we like to keep things oem here at fast tech oh this one rest in peace could not save that one i was perhaps a little bit too aggressive and this one was saved so we're going to say a prayer for uh that tape so we're going to remove this single phillips screw that holds the disk drive down. And now we're going to remove the power cable. We can go ahead and remove this tape because I've already killed it. You can remove it from the disk drive here or you can remove it from the board. I, I recommend you remove it from the disk drive because a lot of you are just going to destroy that connector when trying to remove it from the motherboard. I can't tell you how many calls we get from people telling us they've broken their connector trying to disassemble their consoles. So don't do that. There's a cable right here. There's a, a, a connector we can lift up like this and then we should be able to easily pull this cable out. Now we're gonna lift up the power and eject button assembly like this. Get it out of the way. And now we can lift out the disk drive like this. So that's a PS3 Slim disk drive, but this is only going to work for a 2000 series system. The 3000 series PS3 Slims and the Super Slims, the disk drive replacement is a lot more straightforward or complicated depending on how you look at it. But on the 2000 series, there's a logic board inside the disk drive. There's a green circuit board, this piece right here, that is married to this motherboard. And if you want to do a successful disk drive replacement, you have to take out the logic board and keep it with the system. To do a successful disk drive replacement on these, you have to take out your old Blu-ray drive's logic board, this logic board here, and install it into the new disk drive that you ordered from FastTechStore.com. We're going to get the PS3 out of the way. There's some screws that we have to remove to get to the logic board. There's four in total. There are also Phillips screws. Pushing this connector down like this with our pry tool and then lifting out the cable like so. Or you can just leave the cable in there and when we remove the logic board, it'll come out on its own. I find it better to do it that way because then you're not gonna rip out this piece of foam right here, which is covering this cable because you can rip out the foam if you pull out the cable this way. So at this point, you should just leave this connector like this. And when you remove the logic board, it'll come out safely because we've already undone that clip. And when we're done, we can just fasten this clip again by simply lifting it up like that and making sure our cable is all the way in. We're gonna switch back to a smaller Phillips head a size zero or even a double zero triple zero get these four screws out of the way and as i mentioned earlier you don't have to do this step on the 3000 ps3 slims 
because on those there's no disk drive logic board same with the super slim ps3s it's only the fat ps3s and these first gen ps3 slims that have a disk drive logic board so once you've gotten the screws out you'll note that the ones in the back are uh, longer screws so keep that in mind for reassembly there's one more screw in the middle and now we can remove the bottom cover by simply by lifting it up peel off this tape and there's tape underneath here too so you might have to pull it a little bit and this tape in some cases might break but this one came off pretty nicely now we're gonna get the bottom cover off like this it goes through this piece here so we're just gonna lift it out and then get it off like this so this is the logic board that I was talking about looks like this ps3 disk drive has a game disk in there no worries we'll get to that later so this is the logic board that I was talking about this is the component that must stay with your ps3's motherboard because this is married to your ps3's motherboard this is a logic board BMD 051 and we do sell these on our website. You can remarry these logic boards. So if you, if you had a disk drive logic board that's missing or damaged, which these could be damaged, you can swap these out, but you have to have a jailbroken PS3 and you can remarry these. And I will be doing a video on that on a later date. But for now, I'm gonna show you guys how to successfully replace the disk drive. And to do that, we have to retain this logic board, as I mentioned earlier. There's some cables we have to remove. These are all pull connectors that you can just pull out. Just pull out these ribbon cables, get them out. There's a clip right here that we must depress like this. And then we can lift out the logic board from the back like this and there's these clips that it goes under here like this and you just pull it out but be careful not to bend it too much and also there's a cable underneath that you want to be very mindful about this is probably going to be the trickiest part of this for uh, a lot of you so if we look at this this drive logic board there's a, a cable that it connects to. We're gonna grab the pry tool from the Fastech Pro Toolkit and simply lift up this connector like that. Once that connector has been lifted, the cable's gonna come out like that. And this is the disk drive logic board, as I mentioned earlier. I know I keep repeating myself, but a lot of people miss this step and that's why your disk drive replacement doesn't work. So now you, you get this logic board, you can uh, recycle this disk drive if this is your old non-working disk drive and get your new disk drive ordered from fasttechstore.com, get your new disk drive and install your old logic board in there. But I'm also gonna be showing you guys how to replace the laser. So we'll get to that in a minute. Now let's remove the KEM or KES 450 AAA laser lens deck, which has four screws that we need to remove to get this out of there. One here, one here, one here. and one here. Now we can get the laser lens deck out by grabbing it from this side here and simply lifting it out. This laser lens has two heads. 
one for the Blu-ray, which is this head right here. And you can actually see that it reflects blue light. And this one here is for DVDs. Now, if you touch these lenses, you can damage them. You can definitely make them dirty, which also makes them not work. So if you have a dirty laser lens, which could also cause this thing to not read games, what you want to do is grab some Q-tips from FastTechStore.com, of course, and get some alcohol from FastTechStore.com. And I'm not talking Hennessy or rum. I'm talking about isopropyl alcohol, 70% specifically. Links in the description box. And you want to spray some alcohol on your laser lens and grab a Q-tip and go in a circular motion on the Blu-ray lens head and then on the DVD head. And if you've gotten alcohol on other components, don't worry about it too much because this stuff will evaporate very, very quickly. So we're just going in circular motions, getting a nice clean on the laser, getting any dust or residue off of it and we're only going in a circular motion we're not going like this we're not going like this we're going circles you can also just replace the laser lens instead of the entire deck and you can do that by moving this laser down all the way here there's a, a, a retaining pin I would like to call it it's a long little piece of metal that holds this thing in through tension and what we got to do is we got to push it like this and off you see how it came off? Now we can slide this, this piece up, this bar that the laser lens slides on. And now you can pull the rod out like this. Boom, 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 comes out. And now be careful of this plastic piece on the side here. And right around here, right around here, you can get the laser out. You see how the left side went under? This is some real jujitsu shit you have to do to get this thing out. And then as you see, I'm turning the plastic piece turns also and then you can get it out. It's kind of complicated and you might mess up this piece, but if you do, we do sell it on our website. Surprise, surprise. You can flip the laser lens over, remove this arm with a Fast Tech Pro Auto Kit, of course. And then get the cable off if you want at this point if you're like super super cheap and only want to replace the laser we got you covered as well but honestly the easiest thing for most of you is going to be either replacing the deck which is kind of easy or just replacing the entire disk drive but in all three scenarios we got you covered so please like the video that helps us out a lot now i'm going to show you guys how to reassemble this whole thing once you've for example, replace your laser ordered again from FastTechStore.com. Reinstall the cable like this all the way to the blue line. Push down the clip. Let's reinstall this arm now. And I'm mindful not touching the head of the laser while I'm doing this. Reinstall the screw. Our FastTech Pro Auto Kit is magnetic. It helps keeps the screws in line. Like this. Now we're going to reinstall the laser the same way we removed it. By being a, a black belt in jiu-jitsu. Stick this pe plastic piece in. You would, think, you would not think that this would be the first piece going in, but it is. And then rotate the laser lens. And you see how it hooks on? And then at the same time, you gotta, you got to turn this thing up so that it's, it guts, this side gets on this rail over here. And then we stick this rod in. All right, stick this rod in like this. Make sure it goes through. And then this side should go through here. You see how it's going in? And you gotta, you gotta do some, uh, again, some more jujitsu here. Lift up this piece as you're pushing the rod in and then push the rod all the way in and at the now at this point of it you're gonna have to push the rod up some more so it clears this screw right here lift it up so it's clears and then push the rod from this side this took me years and years to learn properly and I'm I've condensed it down in a few minutes for you guys so push this wire down now at this point we still gotta hook this in push it down 
make sure it's on top of this rod push it down and on and now you want to make sure that this thing slides as it should and you could have avoided all that if you just replaced the entire deck but hey I know people like to save money now we're gonna stick this side in first like this now we got these four screws that we have to reinstall one here one here one here and one here now we're going to reinstall the logic board back in the trickiest part is going to be getting this cable in we're going to line up the cable first on the logic board it goes in like this Again, some more jiu-jitsu. Highly technical. But this is a Japanese console and, and they like to do things this way. So those bloody American hands can't get in there. And steal their secrets, I suppose. I don't know why, but it seems like only Japanese are, things are made like this. So we're going to stick the cable in somewhere here. And then, at the, and then when you stuck it somewhere in here, then you're gonna push this clip on like this. And you have to make sure that the cable is in all the way to the blue line. Now that we have that cable in, should be all easy, easy from here. This side of the logic board goes on first. It goes under these teeth here. There's these two plastic pieces that the logic board is gonna go underneath. A quick reminder while you're enjoying this video that these videos take a lot of time and effort to make so the least you can do is subscribe to the channel like the video and be sure to order any parts if you need them from fasttechstore.com let's continue watching the rest of this video okay and now we're gonna push the back on like this there is a and now we have to push it down get this clip out of the way like this and make sure it's on top then make sure that these cables are in all the way to the blue line. And then make sure this cable is all the way into the blue line here. Like this. And then make sure this cable is in here like this. Now we can reinstall the bottom plate. This side is going to go on first. Like this. And then the shiny silver part goes, shiny metal part goes under the matte aluminum. I believe this is aluminum. And then just lift up this piece here so that this side goes in along with that tape. Very unnecessary, but again, Japanese engineering at its finest. Not saying that this is not a well-built system because it is, but sometimes the Japanese are a bit unnecessary as uh, demonstrated by the latest PS5 with uh, all the billions of screws that that thing has. Now we're going to reassemble this thing and the long Phillips screws, these ones here, they go in the back, they go here. So we're going to stick these long ones in here, press a button on the Fastec Pro Auto Kit and save a bunch of time. How are you going to go back? To a regular screwdriver once you use the fast tech pro auto kit like you'd have to have something really wrong with you the, the smaller phillips screws go here here and here and the final screw of the disk drive goes in here Now we have to reinstall that cable, which actually in, in the previous scene came out on its own. So we're going to reinstall this cable by lining it up in that connector and then pulling this connector up like this and making sure that the cable is in all the way to the blue line. So the blue line should not be visible as demonstrated here. 
So we're going to further disassemble this PS3 Slim down to the motherboard. Next I'm going to show you guys how to work on the motherboard or replace the thermal paste or I guess even replace the fan which I should probably cover first because that's the easiest thing to do. Also the front power and eject button connectors. Sometimes believe it or not these can also cause problems. If these have been water damaged your console will not turn on and very very easy to replace just lift up this cable and out it comes this is a model DSW 001 and you know what I'm gonna say next it is available at fasttechstore.com because I know you were thinking is it available on fasttechstore.com and I'm here to tell you yes it is do not worry Check the links in the description box. Coupon code YouTube for a discount. You're welcome. Next, I'll show you how to replace the fan. Some more t unnecessary tape. Lift it up. And again, two ways to remove the connector. You can try grabbing the white part, not the off-white part, and wiggling and pulling like this, how I demonstrated it just now with my brilliance, or you can just pull out the connector by grabbing all of the wires at the same time, wiggling and pulling. Not one wire, because then you pull that one wire out, but if, but if you grab all of them, that distributes the force and cable will come out much easier. There's a hook that the cable is tucked underneath. We're gonna get it out. It's gonna be a little bit tricky at first, might have to push the side of the case off and out it comes. Now there's a couple of screws that we have to remove. Once these two screws are out, our fan will come out as well. And the model number is G10C112MS1H. 56J14. And as you notice, I had to rotate the fan because the I don't know if the GoPro's shitty autofocus is picking it up, but the model number is right around here for whoever's interested. And uh, quite a long model number. I've lost time out of my life saying the name of this thing. And uh, about two gigabytes of data on this GoPro. That was a long ass name for a fan. They could have just called it PS3 Slim Fan, but no, they had to go with that. Again, very, very Japanese. Now, to get the motherboard out, there's some screws that we have to get out of the way. One's here. There's one here. One here. One here and one here. Now there's some tape, more tape, that holds these uh, antenna wires in place. We can get this tape off without damaging it by sliding the wires from the side. very sophisticated and then like this boom now we should be able to get the board out from the front like this and that's the heat sink and motherboard assembly there's some more Phillips screws on the back Two things that are inevitable when doing uh, PlayStation disassembly, shamelessfasttechstore.com, shoutouts, and tons of screws. So we're going to remove these Phillips screws here. Now for these ones, I'm going to switch to a bigger Phillips head, like a P70. I'm going to switch to a P70 for that additional grip. And we might have to hand turn our FastTech Pro Auto Kit at first, because these ones are in there tight for whatever reason. Yeah, 
this one, that one was really tight. Even the heat sink screws come off easier than these. Now for the heat sink screws. I can't believe how clean this system is for, for its age. Now we're gonna lift up the back panel like this, get that out of the way. And now we should be able to lift out the motherboard. And I recommend that you lift it out by lifting it from the front where the USBs are. And the old thermal paste is gonna be making this thing stick onto the heat sink. So we wanna have a gentle approach with this. And just, you know, take your time for some of you, it's gonna be more difficult than this. But take your time removing this component. These two cables are gonna come out. And uh, this thermal paste on the cell side is much drier than it is on the RSX side. The RSX side is not doing so bad. It still uh, looks a little bit better than this side. But regardless, at this point, it would have to be replaced because it is well, you know, like 15 years old. So that's the PS3 slim motherboard for a CECH 2000 system. If we, this is a model DYN-001. The part number for the motherboard is 1-880-055-41. That's the part number and that's the model number. And as I mentioned earlier in the disk drive replacement part of this video, the disk drive logic board and the motherboard have to stay together because they're married to one another. And if you replace the motherboard without also taking out the old logic board and keeping it with a motherboard, your uh, system's not gonna read disks and not even run applications because you need a matching disk drive logic board even to run applications off the hard drive and again the model number and the part number is also on the back of the motherboard some of the common issues with these motherboards sometimes this chip right here which is the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth chip dies and when this dies your controller will only connect with a USB in safe mode and outside of safe mode the controller is not going to connect and in some cases your Wi-Fi is going to stop working or the Wi-Fi signal is going to drop. And that is caused sometimes by bad antennas, but most of the times by this chip right here, which you'd have to desolder with a hot air station because it is soldered on. These HDMI ports were also not very durable and a lot of them did break. Not as much as the early PS4s, but these also did fail and if you uh, have to replace these we do sell the HDMI port along with the chip and everything else including the motherboard itself on our website at fasttechstore.com and we would sell it with the disk drive logic board so if you want a motherboard and disk drive logic board combo check the links in the description box so as I mentioned earlier you sh you must replace the thermal paste at this point if you have separated the CPU and GPU chip from the heatsink and you should also delid these and replace the actual thermal paste underneath because a lot of people don't know, but the actual CPU and GPU chips are underneath. We're gonna remove the old thermal paste by using paper towels or a piece of fabric and just wiping the old thermal paste off. And this paste is not that dry actually compared to what other PS3 Slims would have if they were uh, this old, but this system is a low mileage, low hours system. This is not a car, so I guess it would be low hours, but yeah, you guys get the point. So we're gonna wipe down the old thermal paste, wipe that paste down, get the paste residue out of there. 
And now we're going to put some isopropyl alcohol on the chips and then wipe it down again. Just put it down and then wipe it down with a different piece of fabric or paper towels. I know you're disappointed that we don't sell paper towels at fasttechstore.com. I know, I know, but uh, we're working on it, so don't worry. Now we're gonna do the same thing on the heat sink. Get that old BS factory thermal paste off. Once with a dry fabric, just to get that residue, just to get that really dry paste off. And to get an even better cleaning, because you'll notice some of this paste in the corners is gonna be kinda hard to get. You can also remove the block from the heat sink completely. And there's two more here, one here, And one here. You could have just cleaned it right there without removing the block, but we like to be thorough. We're known for how much detail we put in our videos. And then once again, put some isopropyl alcohol, rub the heat sink down. And by the way, guys, you can use the coupon code YouTube for 5% off on all of our products. From the thermal paste that we're gonna use to the isopropyl alcohol and everything else. Now the next step I'm about to show you is completely optional. You can just replace the thermal paste on top of the heat spreaders and in most cases you will be okay. But I do recommend delitting these and removing the IHS or the internal heat spreader which is these two pieces of nickel plated copper right here and because it is nickel plated copper we can use liquid metal underneath these as well not on top but underneath but i'm going to show you guys how to de-lid these uh, remove the heat spreader if you will you're going to need a heat gun ideally you want something with a temperature setting like this one here if you don't want to spend the hundred something dollars that this heat gun costs there are cheaper alternatives, but they don't have a digital heat setting like this one does. So we're gonna set the heat gun to 400 degrees Fahrenheit. And I'm gonna start off by delitting the RSX. And we only need the heat gun for the RSX. So what we wanna do is we wanna heat up the corners of the RSX, these four points here, for about two minutes. And you see how I'm moving my heat gun between those four points? All right, so well, now that we've heated it up for about a minute or two minutes, we are gonna need our Fastech IHS removal kit for the next step, which includes a flat head, which I've bent at an angle, and a razor blade. So check the links in the description box for this tool kit. We're gonna get a piece of cardboard and we're gonna stick it between the substrate and the IHS plate, right here in the middle. Then we're gonna take the flathead from our Fastech IHS removal kit and we're gonna stick it underneath the RSX right around here. And we're placing the cardboard because we don't wanna damage the substrate. And then we're just gonna lift up like this. And the IHS came off. That's the IHS. For the RSX, and this flathead that I used is a specific size flathead that I did, had to do a lot of research because most flatheads would not 
be thin enough to make that clearance and if they're thin enough they're probably not strong enough but this is the right kind of flathead that you need so check the links in the description box as you can see I was able to do this in about a couple of minutes flat it took longer to heat the thing than it did taking off the IHS now we're also going to remove the thermal paste which is on the GPU chip aka the RSX I'm going to do the same thing on the RSX spray it with some isopropyl alcohol and wipe it down until we get a mirror finish like this one this is what the end result should look like now I'm going to show you guys how to remove the, the cell IHS which is a little bit more difficult we're going to need the blade from our fast tech IHS removal kit and we're going to stick the blade in between the IHS and the substrate. Same, same place we stuck our flathead, but we want to be careful with this step, obviously, because we're using a razor blade. And also because you can't replace the cell easily if you end up damaging it. So if you mess this up, you will screw up your system. So what we want to do is we want to just push down our blade between the substrate and the IHS and push in from the corner some corners are easier than others as you can see my blade is steady going in steady going in I'm a I'm a rapper now I listened to too much Lil Wayne when I was in high school which is around the time that these systems came out so this one's definitely tougher than the CECH A01 system I did recently on YouTube check that out if you haven't already as you can see it is going in Bitch, I'm going in, I'm going in, and I'ma go hard, and I'ma go hard. So, it's going in here, and by the way guys, if you want this kit, you can use the coupon code YouTube for a discount. Links are going to be in the top comment and the description box. Just pushing it in, cutting that glue as I'm sliding it through. It's giving me some resistance here, so I'm going to pull it out. I'm going to pull it out now and approach it from this side here. I want to be mindful that there's components like this component here that I don't want to touch with my blade. Someone was saying, oh, this is not the best way. This, this is the best way. They don't know nothing. Where's your YouTube channel? People just talk shit. This is the best way. And we got this kit in the description box. You can use the coupon code YouTube for a discount. That side's done pretty much. Now we can approach it from this side. I can feel it moving slightly but it's not quite there yet. So we wanna do all the sides. This one I think I already did, yep. Yeah, slides through easy on this side. I think 
we're almost there. Almost there. I can feel it moving now. What is still holding you on? Let's go in from this corner. Oh, this, this side's already done. Yeah, it's moving now. It's moving now. It's still sticking on this side. So we're just going to try to cut through this glue a little bit more, even though I could just pull it off at this point. But we don't want to put any undue stress on the board. I know once I push it through here, that's going to be it. There you go, like that. And that's the cell IHS that's come off. And we can see the smaller cell and RSX chips compared to the 90NM RSX on the CECH A01 and E01 that I've disassembled and delitted before. You can see on the side-by-side -side comparison there's a significant size difference in the chips. As you can see, this chip has crusty old thermal paste, just as expected. So we're gonna grab our wipes. We're gonna wipe that old paste off. Now we're gonna spray some isopropyl alcohol on it. Just to get that extra clean and we're gonna use a different wipe to wipe that off. Do the same to the RSX one more time. You can even use a microfiber towel to wipe the chips. We're gonna do the same thing on the IHS. Wipe that old paste off. Spray some alcohol on it. Now we're gonna be applying new thermal paste and we're gonna be using the old trusty Arctic Silver 5 which is what I used to recommend back in the day, up until Thermal Grizzly came around. But Thermal Grizzly is much more expensive and I have used that in previous videos. Uh, and a lot of people complain about it being too expensive. You're broke! You're fucking poor! So, we're gonna be using Arctic Silver 5, which is still a very good thermal paste, but not as expensive as Thermal Grizzly. It's 90% it's as good for half the price. So now we're gonna remove the lid and we're gonna apply a pea-sized amount on the CPU chip, that being the cell, about this much. And same thing here on the RSX. Maybe just add a little bit. Anything more than this is too much. A lot of people go heavy on the thermal paste, but there is definitely a point of diminishing returns when it comes to applying thermal paste. Too little is bad and too much is also bad. Now you could just put these plates back on and a lot of people like to apply thermal paste like that. But I like to be thorough and I like to use an applicator to make sure that all of the surface area of the chip is covered. And there's no way to really tell if this whole surface area is covered unless you do it this way. I mean you can remove the lid but that creates problems because you don't want air bubbles in your thermal paste. A lot of people apply it that way and then oh, I'll lift it up like an idiot and then you know you're 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 not going to do any real damage but you're definitely going to take away from the cooling ability of the paste if you stick the IHS back on and then remove it. So I'm I'm just simply spreading the paste with our applicator. A little bit went off uh, the edge there, no problem. We'll get to that later. But you don't really have to worry about this paste shorting anything, unlike liquid metal, which you can also, by the way, use on the chip, but not on the heat spreader. Because the heat sink is aluminum, and this will be destroyed if you use liquid metal. But the IHS is a copper nickel material, so you can 
use liquid metal on these and i have done that on a ps3 cech a01 backwards compatible system so if you want to check out that video i'll include a link in the description box but that video has been done on my channel if anyone's interested so let's spread this paste and make sure we got a nice even spread Let's get that paste off the edge there. Let's grab Q-tips, really called cotton swabs. And people call them Q-tips because of the brand Q-tip. That's how powerful branding can be. People like to call tape scotch tape, but scotch tape is a brand. This is called packaging tape or clear tape. But see, I made that mistake too. Maybe I'll start calling all screwdrivers Fast Tech Pro Auto Kits. I'm just gonna go to a random computer shop where the technicians are disassembling computers and I'll be like, yeah, that's a nice Fast Tech Pro Auto Kit you got there, sir. All right, now that we've applied our paste on our chips, this is what it should look like. Let's get the board out of the way for a second. Now we're gonna have to apply the paste on the heat spreaders. Now, once you apply the paste, you could mix them up, but the easiest way to tell is by looking at the underside. The easiest way to not mix them up is to look at the lid and it says RSX and cell. This is the GPU, this is the CPU lid. And once you've covered it with paste, it's easy to mix it up. But the easiest way to tell is by looking at the underside. This is the GPU, this is the CPU. And also the, the cell IHS is much thinner than the GPU. So now we're gonna apply some paste. Arctic Solar 5, links in the description box, by the way, guys. We do, we do stock these at fasttechstore.com. Use coupon code YouTube for a discount. Now we're gonna apply some paste on the heat spreader. We're gonna have to use a little bit more than we did obviously on the processor because this is a big surface area that we have to cover. Okay, about this much should suffice. If we need to add more, we can add more. What I like about Arctic Silver 5 is it's it spreads really easily, as you can see here. It's much easier to apply than Thermal Grizzly Extreme, for example. There was an extremely cheap commenter in one of my videos on the comment section saying, well, uh, can I use brake cleaner for thermal paste? And I was like, man, are people really this stupid and cheap? For $9, you're willing to destroy your system. Crazy. But yeah, some people will cheap out for $9 or $20, $25 for good thermal paste, and then wreck their $200, $300, $400 machine. Completely dumb. Don't be that guy. Check the links in the description box, buy real thermal paste. Don't put brake cleaner or fucking brake fluid in your system, man. That's not a good look. So now I got my GPU and CPU heat spreader covered in paste, how it should be. Now I'm gonna put them where they belong. This one is for the RSX, which is the GPU. And once I set them down, I don't want it to move around too much. This one goes on like this for the CPU. And now the system is ready to be reassembled. And while I'm in here, I'm gonna replace that thermal pad with a new one. Let's clean out this heat sink before we put it back into the system. Let's get those little dust bunnies out of there. 
Same thing with a case. Same thing with a case. You could also clean the case with soap and water, but it's not bad enough where we have to do that. But I have done that in the past for other systems. You can use a brush to get in those nooks and crannies. Get those little dust bunnies out of there. Because likely this system isn't going to be disassembled for another few years. Let's install the heat sink block back onto the mid plate. There's these three black screws that go in here. 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 And there's one more black Phillips screw that goes in here. Now we're going to install the heat sink back onto the motherboard. And we have to be mindful that these heat spreaders are not being held on by anything, so they could move around. And if they move around, they could come off the chip and that could cause overheating. So be mindful of that. Let's remove these cables before we proceed. The side with the ports is going to go on first. So we're going to install this side of the board on the heat sink first. And we want to lift up the board gently from the bottom side and then slide the ports on like this. All right. And then we're just going to make sure that the motherboard is flat down like this and now because we have the motherboard against the heatsink now we can quickly flip it over like that now let's install the back plate back on like this And guys, we sell everything in from the back plate to the heat sink to the motherboard itself at fasttechstore.com. Just in case you needed another reminder. I don't care. I'll plug my business shamelessly. Now we're going to install these silver screws that go here, 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 here. One here, one here, so it seems like Sony engineers talk to the bosses and it's like how many screws would you like us to put in there and Sony bosses go yes, one here, And the final one in here. Now we're going to install the heat sink clamps back on. Some people install the heat sink clamps before the other screws are installed. And I think that's a mistake because that can cause issues, but I'm not going to get into that. My ways are always the best. Now we're gonna tighten these screws, but you wanna go diagonally. You don't wanna tighten one and then tighten the other. You wanna go, you wanna, you wanna do one a little bit and then go right across, do that one a little bit, and then go across, do that one a little bit, back and forth. That way we ensure even pressure on the chip. Now, I got them tight enough, which is what you want. 
We want them to be as tight as possible, but not overly tight. Now we're ready to install the motherboard back into the case assembly. The back is gonna go in first, this side. We're gonna lift up the we're going to lift up the AC inlet slightly using the wires, put the back in. You see how the ports line up and now I can just drop the front in. I want to make sure that these cables are out of the way and now I can just kind of drop it in like that, pivot it in. Now let's install the fan back in, goes on like this, a couple of screws that hold it in. These black Phillips screws. One goes here. And another one here. Like that. Now we're gonna get these wires in the way they were. OEM. I'm gonna tuck those wires under that tape like they're supposed to. Now let's run these wires through here as they were. They go under this piece here like this. Now I'm going to install these black screws that go on the motherboard. One of them goes in here. And one of them goes here. There's these two silver screws. One of them goes here. And another one goes in here. Another black screw goes in here. Now we're going to install the power button board, but before I do that, I'm just going to clean it because it's filthy. Spray it with some isopropyl alcohol and wipe it down with a microfiber cloth. And what a difference that made. A nice reflective surface that probably wouldn't even be allowed today, thanks to Greta Thunberg. Probably. What a difference that made. Now we're gonna install this piece by installing the ribbon cable in, and it goes in like this. Like that. We're gonna not fully seat the piece yet. Let's get these wires where they need to be, like that. But we're not gonna seat it yet because the disk drive goes in first. So we're going to install the disk drive, but these wires have to be on top. We're gonna insert the disk drive, get the on off button out of the way, and make sure that it's sitting like this at the front. I've installed also the power cable back in into the disk drive, this wire right here. And now I can seat the front panel like this. These wires are gonna run through here first and then they go under this tape here, like this. And now it has to go under this tape here. You can replace this tape with packaging tape if you want, but really not much of a point to do that. The black one goes on here and you just line them up like this and then you just push down, very, very easy. Line it up, push down, simple connectors. These are for your Wi-Fi Bluetooth transmissions. Get it under that tape. Now let's connect this ribbon cable back in. You can line it up and then push it down like that, boom, like that. This big black Phillips screw that goes in here. And this one holds the disk drive down. Like that. Now we're gonna connect the fan connector 
the red side is up the red wire it goes in like this this and then this wire is supposed to go under this hook here like that boom in there and then this wire is supposed to be under there like that connect the connector goes under this tape here like this Let's connect the disk drive power cable which goes in here like this this is the cable for the power supply goes on like this push it down now the power supply is ready to be reinstalled goes on like this make sure this cable is out of the way and it goes under here like this two phillips screws that hold it in here and here now let's connect these cables this one is going to push down simply just like the other one is too this one's going to push down this one here also goes on very very easily like that now let's install the case back on, but before I do that, I'm going to clean the insides. The front side is going to go on first like this. There's teeth in the front that go on like this over the case, and then you're just going to pivot the back on. But before we do that, I must put this under the super necessary tape. And now we're just going to pivot the case back on, boom. Let's give the case a little bit of a cleaning. Isopropyl alcohol is fine for matte surfaces. Not so much if you have a glossy surface. It will ruin your glossy surface, but it's fine for a matte surface. And by glossy, I don't mean like this. I mean like the backwards compatible PS3 or an Xbox 360 Slim. Let's put some Windex on this to give it a clean. Now let's flip it over, do the same thing at the bottom, now let's install these long Phillips screws that go in the case here, 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 here here and here and here fast tech pro auto kit back in action And now for these three torque screws and now we're going to switch back to a t8 bit from our fast tech pro auto kit to install the t8 screws which go in here here and here Now let's install these back on. These cover the screws. The plastic one goes here. There's a rubber one that goes in the corner here. Another plastic one here. A rubber one here. Plastic here. This is plastic here. And there's supposed to be one more rubber foot, but that's missing. 
and that's okay. Oh, well, not really. Bothers me slightly, but that's okay. Now, if you want, you can install that non-existing warranty warranty sticker back on that says void. So you know your warranty is double fucked when it says void. Not only are you 10 years out of warranty, now the sticker's gone. Let's reinstall that hard drive back in. Goes on like this. This side goes in first. And now we're gonna install the Phillips screws, but we have to switch back, of course, to our Phillips bit and our FastTech Pro Auto kit. Now let's install the hard drive back in. Goes in like this, like that. Lift up this panel. Let's install the cover back on. Goes in like this. And slide it on. Now we're gonna install that blue Phillips screw in. Reinstall that piece Now I'm going to replace the missing foot Just to make the system completely perfect and that's what we call a full Restoration if this video helped you out, which I'm sure it did Please be sure to subscribe to our channel and smash that like button Now we're going to turn on the ps3 to make sure it works very very important step And looks like it is working green and the blue lights on there was a disc inside the disk drive as we remember let's see what we got going on in here what is this some bollywood movie by the way guys how would you like to see me on the cover of this disc maybe i should apply for bollywood i'm a pioneer in many many different ways i was the first devastatingly handsome tech on youtube maybe i'll be the first Bollywood star slash tech repair youtuber just like I was the first person who showed you how to fix the Xbox one s If it's not turning on by replacing the power supply and just like I was the first YouTube channel to show you how to fix a ps4 pro or a ps4 If it was overheating, maybe I'll be a pioneer in this game once again by being the first Bollywood actor slash YouTube tech but yeah, the console looks like it's working. And that's what we like to see. Thanks for watching another Fast Tech video. Be sure to subscribe to our channel and like the video before you leave. That way you can keep up with our newest content. We're always putting up videos showing you guys how to fix your own devices. And be sure to check out FastTechStore.com. We got parts for Xbox, PlayStation, MacBook, iPhone, and everything in between. And you can use the coupon code YouTube for a discount. This is Shiroz from Fast Tech, and I'll see you in the next one.